Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here for part two at Royal Birkdale. This is the back nine. If you've not seen part one, which was the entirety of the front nine, you can see it already on my channel. This video is basically me playing the whole golf course, showing you different types of shots that you might see the pros play and some shots that you definitely won't see the pros play. I really want to thank the guys at Royal Birkdale for letting me go out there and film. I played with a good friend of mine, Peter Finch. We actually made 16 videos on this particular day. So this was filmed on Tuesday the 27th of June. The full course vlogs, which start tomorrow, Monday the 17th of July, that is the full course vlog, me versus Pete, and they allowed us to play off the back, back tees as well. So that's coming tomorrow. But this next video is the back nine of the Royal Birkdale. There are more birdie opportunities on the back nine, but I think the wind will be much harder on some of the holes than when we experienced it. It was windy, but it wasn't horrendous. So follow me in my journey. I'm gonna tell you about the scores. I'm gonna show you how I played. I'm gonna do some commentating over the footage as well. So uh, there's no kind of just dead space me hitting. We had to play in regulation play this in the morning. So we had to be super quick. That's why this type of video was produced. And then in the afternoon, it was much quieter. So we got to do a full course vlog and six incredible challenges. So stay tuned for those. They start tomorrow on mine and Pete Finch channel. Let's dive into the back nine. I'm currently two over par. Let's see if I can either, either improve on that, hold that score, or let's see what the damage is. Thanks for watching. If you do like the video, hit that like button. And if you are brand new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching guys and enjoy the video. Hi guys, welcome down to the back nine here at Royal Birkdale, where the Open Championship is being played for 2017. We've just played the front nine. You can go over on the channel and check that out. We're doing guest scores for myself on my channel and Pete on his channel. And then we're gonna do the same for the back nine. Tenth hole, I've never played here before. Back nine, looking forward to this. Let's rip it up. So this tenth hole, it's actually quite a short first hole really. It is a dog leg to the left. I hit an iron down to the right side of the hole, which you can actually chew off much more of the corner. And I think you might see some of the guys taking three woods or even driver and drawing it right around the corner. The approach shot is into wind typically. It wasn't that bad today. We had it almost downwind slightly, but normally it's into wind coming off the sea. And this green was possibly the most undulating bar the 17th on the back nine. This had quite a lot of swing in it. Uh, just missed out on my birdie opportunity. No birdie here on 10. Routine right path. path. <laughs> 11th hole, just under 400 yard par 4, but I think the main tee is over there. We've got this littered with bunkers down there. So this was a, a really interesting hole. I hit two iron, but really any club could put you in danger. From driver to three iron, to, to three wood, to five iron. It is a real lottery whether you miss a bunker or not. So I managed to avoid the bunkers, I actually managed to carry them, but like I said, I'm playing this hole slightly down breeze. It's a slim green this and it diagonals towards the right, so I think it's going to be some really good pin positions wow. on this 11th green. I came up short, I was very disappointed with the shot. I've got to be honest with you, that was a mega disappointing shot. Ouch. I wasn't far away at all and I ended up missing the green short. Because the fairways and the surrounding areas around the green are so short, I'm, you, you'll see a lot of guys probably putting off the green. This was a bad, bad bogey. So I parred the 10th, bogeyed the 11th. I'm now three over par. Not happy with that. Not happy with that one bit. It was a dreadful five. 12th hole, par three. It's 181 yards from back here. But we're quite a bit forward today. Nice little hole, this. So this par three, the 12th, was probably one of my favorite holes on the course. It was a little with bunkers, right and left, an upside down saucepan again, but just a beautifully framed hole. And for me, I think a spectator's dream. I found bunker on the right, a little slow motion of the bunker action there. Managed to splash it out, didn't particularly get it close, 
But these sand dunes around this green really lend itself to being a great spectator spot. This was to save par. This was a very, very flat green, not much in this at all. A little bit of slope front to back, that is all it was, and I managed to drop it in for par. Finally, the first sand save of the day, and I've been in a few. <laughs> managed to get up and down of one. Just with them being a bit wet this morning, they're quite compact. I'm sure they won't be like that come open week. 13th hole, par four. I think there's another tee right back there on top of the hill. <whistles> Makes it tough. A bit easier from down here. Not much easier, but just a little bit easier. So when we played this, we played it in to win the 13th hole, but I think typically it's downwind. The tee's much further back, championship. Like I said, in the full course log come in this week, we do play off the back, back tees. I had hit what I thought was a superb drive, but this cheeky bunker has absolutely gobbled it up. That far left to go. And that really happens around this course. You can easily find the little swells and swallows and, and manage to find bunkers that you never think you could actually ever find. I had to wedge it out, unfortunately, um, because as soon as you're in one of those bunkers, it's tough to really get to the green. This was a real nipped wedge shot. The fairways are just delicious. And with this being into wind, I managed to throw it at the flag and actually get some backspin, which again, I don't think you typically see. Nice. Just nipped it and then, I don't know if you can make it out, just went past the pin and then spun back. Chance for par yet. With the ground condition, conditions being so much harder normally, I don't think you'll get a lot of spin with it being wet. This is for par, and I dropped it in. Very good par save, and that's the only par way save. you can really make par if you do find one of the fairway bunkers. So three over through 13, and coming to another par three. 14th hole, par three. And we're actually at the back of the yellow tees here. There is another tee up on top. Probably playing about another 20 yards further. It's 151 from here and a hell of a grandstand being put in behind there. Looks awesome. So this is a beautiful par three. The par threes on the back nine are really stunning. And the grandstands that surround this green, I think if anybody gets a hole in one this week at the open. Okay, so we get down it. here on 13, 14, sorry, 14th green. Look at this. I'm just clambered on the front edge. Pete is just off the front. A couple of chances for birdie with the crowds going wild. So this was for birdie. I read it just coming off the right. Everything told me it was going to come off the right, but unfortunately it kind of stayed there. So I was a bit disappointed with that, but take a par on that hole. But the grandstands I can just imagine around this green will be incredible. Four, three over through 14, coming up to the first par five of the back nine. First par five of the actual so tournament as well, because the yeah. six hole is not a par five, it is a par four in tournament play. So 15th hole, only one of two par fives, I think on the last, on the back nine. And a grueler. We've already hit our tee shots, so we're safe in the knowledge that we've hit two great shots. <laughs> and again, I think this normally is playing into wind, but it being downwind, I was only hitting six iron in the here from 220. Hit an absolute rocket right at it, but I do think this is normally into wind. But I still think this is very birdieable, and I think there's going to be a lot of players knocking it on the green here in two. Oh, that is mega close. <laughs> so that is second shot down this par five, fifteenth, and that looks pretty close. Nearly went in. So we get down to the green, and I've got that left for Eagle. I actually thought it was a lot closer, but it's not bad. So this is for Eagle. Could I drain it? <laughs> I gave it a good run, that's for sure, and it just didn't quite break back. I do think you're going to see a lot of birdies on this hole. I think there's going to be a handful of scattering of eagles. Even if it's into wind, I think a lot of players, as long as they find fairway off the tee or avoid bunkers, if anything, it's a very birdieable hole. So I get back to two over with three left to play. 16th hole. Uh, the camera angle from behind wasn't really working, so I did it from the front. Um, this is just a two iron for safety down there. Slight dog leg to the right. Quite a blind tee shot, actually, just from the gauze. You kind of have to trust your line and hit it down the line. Okay, 16th hole, 370. Proper tee just back there. We're just going off a little bit shorter. Don't forget to jump over to Peach Channel to watch his round of golf. 
ball it. Oh, they're probably two best shots with it all day. Yeah. Good shot. Go and jump over to his channel to watch his round. So if you didn't miss part one, in certain areas on the fairways, you have to actually hit off these mats. It kind of means you've hit a good shot because this is where they predict the players will be hitting their tee shots too. Hard to judge the distance, I'll be honest, when hitting off the mat, but completely understand it because they want the fairways to be absolutely immaculate. I overhit this only from 100 yards away, a bit disappointed. This 16th green, super flat green again, very, very flat. I think you could overread it, but as long as the players stay true to knowing it's flat, they could definitely score some good. I think 16 again, if it's no wind, could easily be birdieable. 17th hole, par five, two holes to go. It's 5 2 2 from here, and there is another tee that's further back. I'll tell you what, that's a good grandstand to sit in if you come into the open. Behind the 16th, you're going to see the shots coming in 16 and the tee shots down 17. Good grandstand, that. 17th hole, par 5, back into win now. Again, think plays normally downwind, absolutely nutted this straight through two massive sand dunes that surround the actual framing of the fairway. This so is back into win 230, absolutely bulleted a low three, a four iron, sorry. Um, that was a and it hit chased and chased one. and chased and finished, managed to find greenside bunker. So it was a tough up and down this, had to play it very delicately. This 17th green is very long and very thin. Definitely the most undulating on the golf course. Um, and this was for birdie to get back to just one over par. After a good sand save, I managed to knock it in. And I'm one over par with only one left to play. So feeling, feeling good about the back nine. I felt like the wind was definitely in my favour um, and could easily be scored. Now, the 18th hole is a par four in championship play, even though on the market there it says par five. It's only 472 yards, elevated tee shot. The further right you go, the more club you've got to take. But it means that you've got a tighter line in. So you, the more club you take, the more you can go right, but it leaves yourself a shorter shot left in. This is the walkway between the 18th tee and the 18th fairway. It's a little walkway that is so enclosed by gorge buses. It is fantastic. I love it. And you could just imagine the emotions going through on that uh, tunnel as you come through. And this is Check what you're faced with. An entrance. Whoa. I'm just going in the left rough. Got a long way left in. But about 200 yards after hitting two iron off the tee, I went too far left off this last tee. Look how beautiful that frame is though. Grandstand right, grandstand left. Iconic clubhouse in the background. The more right you take, the guys are going to be in seven and six irons left into this. Found bunker, one of the three bunkers up the left-hand side of this green. And just managed to splash it out and everything just chased down to the flag. This was for nice. level par. Very nice. And just left it oh. just short. Ricky boy. To win the open. <laughs> With a score of two over. It's a, a, tough, a tough day. It must have been a very tough day. It was a tough, tough week. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video down here at the wonderful Royal Birkdale. Absolutely love that playing under the grandstands with my good mate. It was just class. Thanks so much for Robert Dale for letting us come down here and play and film. And we've got some videos coming and then we're gonna do a proper course vlog this afternoon. So do stay tuned for that. I know that was just a full round of golf giving you the whole idea and what we can shoot. I think I shot two over there. Not sure. Go and check Pete's channel out to watch it. And thanks very much and we'll leave you there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all soon. Finish. All right. Just keep on holding that finish, Ricky. All right, Danny. Oh, whoa, sit down.